Hello YouTube. So this is the follow-up video to the throat plate challenge that I proposed on YouTube. So a lot of you guys had some really good submissions uh, using a variety of different tools, uh, but what I'm going to go over today is how I would go with it. What I did like, specifically in the, the comments, is a lot of people talked about on the bottom of the throat plate after it's been cut and it's been uh, fitted gluing some sort of piece of acrylic on the bottom to line up or to fit inside the groove where the blade can be removed. So that would prevent my spinning of my throat plate as it's in here. Now again, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a pair of calipers and I'm going to get an exact measurement. And what I'm going to do with that actually is I'm going to turn down a blank of wood to that exact diameter. Then I'm going to secure my acrylic circle, so I'm going to cut a circle on the bandsaw close to my measurement, and then I'm going to go to the lathe and I'm going to turn that throat plate exactly to the perfect tolerance. One thing I'm going to do also is if the acrylic is a little thicker than this recess here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn a step on it. So what happens is as I put it in, it'll sit perfectly flush with my surface without having to worry about it catching any of my boards as I'm cutting through. All right, so with that said, let's get to it. <clears throat> so to measure an interior diameter, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the bottom half of my calipers and I'm going to open it up until I get perfect contact. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my lathe calipers and I'm going to set it to exactly this distance. So I, when I turn it, the diameter of the blank or my, my piece of wood will be exactly the same as the throat plate hole in my table. So I'm going to get that measurement real quick and then we're going to lay it out on a blank of wood and turn it down. There we go. Now I have my centered blank. So right now I'm going to center the spur bit. Gently drive it into the workpiece. And I'm going to slide that into the headstock. And then bring my tailstock and my tool rest down as well. I am going to be wearing a face shield while I'm lathing. It's just a good safety precaution because even with safety glasses, the splashback that I can get from this can go underneath my safety glasses. So this is just an extra uh, type of protection I normally wear when I'm lathing, especially when I'm lathing the bigger blocks or spindle turning a, la a larger block. All right, so let's get to it.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark a center point, drill it through, screw it to this piece here, then trace around the circumference of my template, and then use the bandsaw to cut back that excess material. Then I'll come back to the lathe and I'll pinch the smaller acrylic on the lathe and I'm going to turn it to exactly fit around my template. So let's get to it. There we go. Now I'm going to relief cut that closer and then I'm going to come back to lathe and lathe it back to its final dimensions. So something I'm just noticing, I think I should drill the hole a little larger so that I can get more of my quill or my, my tailstock quill through the acrylic so I can get a, a contact point on the other side. So let's try that. So what I ended up doing was I actually couldn't get a good contact without my template moving around. So what I did was I put a screw in to hold my acrylic base plate, throat plate in, and I took my quill and I gently countersunk, I gently countersunk the screw just enough so that my quill could sit perfectly in the center without damaging the quill of my tail stop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this, and I'm trying to use the sharpest tool I have to do that. And I'm going to pick my carbine cutter. So 
Second thing, another thing I just noticed, need to bring the tool rest in just a little bit more. I should have about a quarter of an inch gap. This is so that I don't get my tool stuck below and you have a cap below the center axis and get a catch or have the tool torn from my hands. So let's try this again. There we go. So I am going to cut in the blade, even though this is a little loose on the bottom. So normally what you could do is you can get a Japanese saw or a dovetail saw that's the same kerf as your bandsaw blade and then mark a straight line and cut it. I like to personally just cut it in with the blade that's on the machine. And there I go, I got my zero clearance. So let me pop out the old plate and let's see how this goes. And there's my new zero clearance throat plate. Now, another way of doing it is I can actually take this entire piece of acrylic, cut into the other side of the table, and then clamp that down, and that would be a zero clearance table for my bandsaw. So, after thinking about it for a while, you can keep your original throat plate, and then just raise the table with an acrylic tabletop, so you get a perfect zero clearance the whole time, instead of going through this entire complex project. But it's just another way of just doing Woodworking. So again, I love experimenting and trying new things. So this was just a nice little experiment I wanted to show you guys. So kind of successful. So I mean, it, with more practice, I think I could get a better tolerance. But I would probably say the better one would be screwing this down and then going around the circumference of this with a template router. So I don't by actually cut back my material and change the diameter so my tolerance is too small. So after I turned off the camera, I was playing around with the throat plate a little bit more, and then I realized what I could do is put paste wax around the edge of this here, and then take a hot glue gun and put a couple dots on this throat plate. Now when I squeeze it in, it'll lock it into place so that the throat plate won't move around. The only downside is I can't take this out multiple times. So I can't take it out for each blade change. This is going to be here and then I can't move it. So it, that is one other approach that I could use to keep the throat plate from both twisting and moving around. So again, the great thing about woodworking is sometimes a mistake might make you think a little bit more about your overall design and in this case, because it's a little loose, it made me think, why not try to hot glue it to the actual table on the bottom? Again, hot glue, since it's not a permanent glue, so it won't be permanently stuck to this machine, I can always throw away this throat plate and make a new one as a result. So, another tip. So with that said, 
You guys have a great day and see you later.